Good morning. Today we'll be starting with series of lectures on operative gynecology. As the name suggests, operative gynecology means the surgeries done in gynecology. So today we'll be discussing some of the minor procedures done in gynecology. Dilatation and curettage is one of the very common surgeries done in gynecology. In this procedure, uh, involves the, we take out the material from inside of the uterus. So there are two terms. One is dilatation, which refers to the dilatation of the cervix, and curettage, which refers to the scraping or removal of the tissue lying the uterine cavity, that is the endometrium, with a surgical instrument called curette. So this is a picture of the curette the sharp and blunt edges of the curate and some of the curates they have got the property of suction also so what are the indications for dilatation and curettage they can be diagnostic or therapeutic majority of the indications are diagnostic and the main purpose of doing dnc is for the evaluation of abnormal uterine bleeding which includes peri and postmenopausal bleeding and then evaluation of infertility and in that series sometimes we diagnose uh, in, uh, tuberculosis also that is a genital tuberculosis and to exclude endocervical and endometrial cancers. Therapeutic uh, indications are not that common they are mainly utilized for removal of the intrauterine contents. Some of the indi therapeutic indications are prolonged or excessive vaginal bleeding, not responding to medical treatment. Then miscarriage, mostly it is incomplete abortion. Some of the cases of molar pregnancy, we have to do DNC. And in some of the cases of postpartum hemorrhage, where the, there are retained placental tissue. So there are some of the instruments which are being used for the procedure of DNC. Uh, this we will be seeing when we will be discussing instruments in the practical class. Uh, so the instruments are Valsalum forceps, which is a long forceps with three teeth on one arm and the two teeth on another arm, uh, which ensures uh, a firm, they, these teeth fit one into the other and, uh, that, and that ensures a firm grip on the cervix. Another instrument is SIPS anterior vaginal retractor which is a double-ended instrument with a loop at either end. And then there is a sponge holding forces which is mainly used for cleaning the part and also can be used for holding the soft cervix during obstetric dilatation and curettage. Then there are cervical dilators which can be single-ended or double-ended. Double-ended are the Hegar's dilator which, which mostly we are using. And then you try and cure it with a long metallic instrument with a small fenestrated end at each side uh, and it can be one, one is a sharp end and another is a blunt end which is mainly used in obstetrics. This instead of valsalum forceps sometimes we use tenaculum forceps uh, which has got only one tooth at each arm and uh, these are usually applied on the anterior lip of the cervix. Other instruments used include uterine sound, which usually used for measurement of the uterine cavity and the cervical length. Sometimes uh, it's said that uh, we determine the position of the with the uterine position of the uterus with the uterine sound, but mostly it should not be used to determine the position, which can be determined when we are doing provisional examination before doing the procedure. And if you are trying to make out the position of the uterus with the uterine sound, at times perforation can occur. And other indications are used to diagnose the cervical stenosis and used to sound a polyp, IUCD or a uterine septum. And uh, it also helps to break additions in Asherman syndrome. And uh, uterine sound also differentiates between chronic inversion and fibroid polyp. This will be coming to later when we discuss inversion of the uterus and to locate misplaced IUCD. This indication, this was being used earlier when the ultrasound was not there. 
uh, when the uterine sound is placed in the uterine cavity and then we see the location of the UCD in respect to the IUC, IUC uh, sorry, sorry the uterine sound and then we can determine whether it uh, IUCD is in intrauterine or extrauterine. But nowadays with the advent of uterine sound this is usually not used. Another important instrument in sim, uh, sorry, sim speculum and uh, mostly the sim speculum is used it's a double ended and, uh, and it retracts the posterior vaginal wall. Cusco speculum, by wall self retaining speculum. Uh, then there is the award speculum, which is a heavy self retaining retractor provided with a heavy metal ball. And this is also used to retract the posterior vaginal wall. These instruments will be seeing, uh, uh, seeing, will be seeing when we deal with the instruments in the practical class. So this is the DNC set. Here we can see the different sizes of the uterine dilators. This is the Hegas dilator. Then there is a Sims speculum. This is a Sims anterior vision wall retractor. Volsulum. This is the sharp and blunt uterine curate. This is the ovum forceps used for evacuation. The, the uh, intrauterine, if there are contents to the removal of that, this ovum forceps is used. And this is the sponge holding forceps. So preparing for DNC, usually routine blood testing uh, can be done like CBC and other uh, uh, basic tests can be done, but it's not always necessary to do these tests. And usually the patient is kept nil orally before the procedure and some medications can be used uh, for dilating the cervix, cervical opening. Uh, in olden days, the laminaria tents was being used the previous day uh, of the of procedure. Nowadays, we use mesoprostol to gradually dilate the cervical openings so that the dilatation becomes easier. I mentioned place an IV line before the procedure. And uh, it's always good to review the patient's medical history, list of medications used and what the patients are, which medication, if any, the patient is taking and if whether the patient has got any drug allergies. And... Uh, uh, the procedure of DNC is usually performed in an operating room in a hospital or a clinic, at times performed uh, as an outpatient uh, setting, but that is quite rare. It can be done under general, regional or local, that is a paracervical block anesthesia and sometimes even under IV sedation. The type of uh, anesthesia uh, chosen depends upon the reason for the procedure as well as the medical history of the patient. And women's vital parameters are monitored throughout the procedure of DNC. So one should empty the bladder before the anesthesia is given. Then the operating field is cleaned and draped. Vaginal examination is always done uh, before the procedure to confirm the position, the size of the uterus and the furnaces. How are they? Whether there is any mass felt in the furnaces whether there is any tenderness in the furnaces. And then the Sims vaginal speculum is inserted. Anterior lip of the cervix is caught by the volsulum. And then the uterine sound is inserted into the cavity to determine what is the length of the cavity. Then the dilatation of the cervix is done with the graded cervical dilator followed by the curatage. We'll be seeing now one of some of the videos, which is a rough, uh, uh, this thing, you can get an idea how the procedure of DNC is done. Your doctor has recommended that you undergo a dilation and curatage, or DNC. But what does that actually mean? The uterus is part of a woman's reproductive system. It's the organ that contains the growing fetus. The cervix forms the neck of the uterus, and the vagina is the canal through which conception and birth take place. The endometrium is a soft lining that protects the fetus during pregnancy. Reasons for having a DNC vary. Most DNCs are performed because the patient has complained of unusually heavy menstrual bleeding. 
Other common problems include uterine infection, bleeding after sexual intercourse, incomplete miscarriage, or the presence of polyps, small pieces of extra tissue growing on the inside of the uterine wall. Then the surgeon will use a gloved hand to conduct a vaginal examination and will check the size and location of the uterus by pressing on your lower abdomen. A metal or plastic vaginal speculum is used to gently expand the vagina and allow access to the cervix. Once the cervix is visible, a forcep is used to grasp the front lip of the cervix, causing the uterus to open a little. Using a blunt tipped probe, the surgeon carefully measures the length of the uterus and takes a small sample of tissue from the cervical canal. Next, the surgeon will dilate or open the cervix using a series of progressively larger metal rods called dilators. When the cervix has expanded sufficiently, the doctor will use a spoon-shaped instrument called a curette to gently scrape out the lining of the uterus. In some cases, surgeons use a vacuum curette that sucks tissue out through a narrow tube. When the entire lining of the uterus has been removed, the instruments are withdrawn. The tissue removed will then be sent to a laboratory for analysis. So the procedure done is almost the same which we are doing over here except that the speculum use is slightly different. We use uh, uh, sim speculum and the curate watch they have used in this uh, video is slightly different from the one which we are using. So there's another term which we should know in connection with the DNC is fractional curettage, uh, which was being used earlier, but nowadays it is rarely used. And mostly this is used when we are suspecting an endometrial carcinoma or a lower part of the this thing. In cervical carcinoma, usually it's not used. Only when uh, if there is a uh, the 